Welcome to the St. Michael Easter podcast series. My name is Ken Brannan, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Easter is community, rediscovering one another. After being physically separated for more than a year, we look forward to the opportunity to reconnect and become even more the kind of community that God intends. May the power of the resurrection strengthen us for this journey. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from Luke, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 38th verse. After leaving the synagogue, he entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him about her. Then he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately she got up and began to serve them. As the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various kinds of diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on each of them and cured them. Demons also came out of many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Messiah. At daybreak he departed and went into a deserted place, and the crowds were looking for him, and when they reached him, They wanted to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. So he continued proclaiming the message in the synagogues of Judea. Here ends the reading. At daybreak he departed and went into a deserted place, and the crowds were looking for him, and when they reached him, they wanted to prevent him from leaving them. We have a tendency of wanting to fix things in place. When we have a good experience or encounter something meaningful, we want to build a monument to it so that we never forget it. The Jewish people did this with their temple. Peter tried to do this when he offered to build a dwelling for Moses and Elijah. And we do it today with reflecting pools at Ground Zero and statues in our local parks. We want to fix things in place and build something to commemorate people and places of meaning. This is a perfectly natural tendency, but in today's Gospel lesson, Jesus demonstrates that we must remain nimble and responsive to the movement of the Holy Spirit. The love of God cannot be contained. In today's Gospel lesson, the people had learned profound things from Jesus. They had watched him heal their neighbors and cast out demons. They knew he represented the interests of God, and they wanted him to stay with them. But Jesus' response to the people is telling. He says, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. Jesus refused to stay in one place. Jesus resisted the invitation to settle down. He knew that his message was not just for this village, but for the whole region, for the whole world. So he kept moving, he kept teaching, he kept sowing the seeds of God's love. It's easy for churches to become parochial. It's easy to focus on our own interests and our own reality. It makes perfect sense. We have people we like to see at coffee hour. We have teachers whose classes we like to attend. We have chapels we like to pray in. We have experienced God at St. Michael Church, and we want to stay where we're comfortable with the people we recognize. But we must remember Jesus' example. Jesus didn't stay in one place. He moved from village to village. Jesus didn't build a shrine to commemorate his experience of God. He simply wanted to share it with more people. Jesus was always aware of those who had not yet heard the good news, those who had not yet experienced healing, those who had not yet experienced freedom from evil. While it may have been tempting for him to pitch his tent in one place and settle down with his friends, he knew he needed to keep moving, even if it led him into the mouth of danger. Jesus could have opted for respect and renown, But instead, he walked toward the cross, not because he didn't care about his life, but because he knew that the life that God intended for his people couldn't be revealed until even death was redeemed. 
So when you have the impulse to hold on to someone you admire, when you're tempted to put a plaque on a wall or endow a teaching chair, lift your eyes to places and people unseen. Ask yourself, if I have experienced something true about God, do I want to keep it within these four walls or do I want to share it with others? The gift of God's love isn't meant to be fixed in time and place. It's always waiting to be broken open and shared anew, just like the bread of communion. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.